Mr. Neil Armstrong. Thank you for being here and sharing this day with me. I'd like to begin by giving some special thanks to my family and introduce them to you. My son Rick down here. My son Mark, his wife Wendy, and their daughter Kaylee. and my wife, Carol. She's always willing and able to help, and I need a lot of help. On this spot, 60 years ago, I was a wide-eyed freshman going to Saturday morning class. <laughs> the buildings that were here at that time were relatively new. Coincidence. Temporary quarters for classes and laboratories in a student body swollen with World War II veterans. All student housing was overflowing. Many of us lived on the other side of the Wabash until a room became available in West Lafayette or on the, comp on the campus. But the veterans were remarkable. They knew why they were here. They knew what they wanted to achieve, and I learned much from them. During, or during orientation week, freshmen, incoming freshmen, listened to the legendary dean of engineering Andre Potter, who told us, you have to be able to do everything that a scientist could do, but you have to do it on a budget. <laughs> we were introduced to formidable engineering curriculum, a very large uh, number of, of classroom hours with classes in, in uh, differential equations and thermodynamics and kinetics of mechanisms. We didn't know what those words meant, but we thought it sounded exciting. We, we learned about the uniqueness of engineering. Science is continually searching for a better understanding of ourselves, our world, and the universe around us. Engineering would take that knowledge and build things that did not exist in the natural world. Engineering is about what can be. Engineering soon learned a theological maxim. Hell has a constant temperature. <laughs> if, temperature <clears throat> if temperature variations could exist or could be created, some engineer would build an air conditioner. <laughs> of course, there is a, another possibility that temperature variations do exist there, but there are no engineers there. <laughs> Engineering students make substantial use of the Greek letter eta in lowercase. It's often used as the symbol for efficiency. Engineers strive to make efficient products that are stronger, lighter, less expensive, use less fuel. In short, engineers spend their lives making things better. Some of us are natural pessimists, some natural optimists. Uh, it's often been said, some see the glass full, some see the glass half empty. Engineer sees the glass is twice as big as it needs to be. <laughs> After John Glenn completed America's first human flight into orbit 45 years ago, 
President John Kennedy said, quote, we have a long way to go in this space race, but this is a new ocean. And I believe that the United States must sail on it and be in a position second to none, end quote. What we have here today, a number of Purdue alumni who have sailed in this new ocean. We have other boilermakers here who designed and built the craft and the systems and made the United States second to none. Most of all those sailors and builders based much of their success on their engineering skills learned on this campus. In those 45 years, we have gone far, but we still have a long way to go. This building should be a crucible in which the advances that lie ahead are created. In addition to the state of Indiana, as the president has mentioned, many have made a significant part in making this building a reality. Uh, in addition to those names that the president meant, mentioned, I'd like to mention a few other friends from the aerospace industry who played a part in making this building a reality. She mentioned Bob and Mary Jo Kirk. I'll mention them again because he is a great friend. I'll mention uh, Milan and the late Ray Siegfried, Rolls-Royce uh, America head Jim Guyette, Marshall Larson of Goodrich, Bob Stevens of Vance Kaufman of Lockheed, Brian Rowe of GE, and others. And I take the liberty of personally thanking them on behalf of everyone who will benefit from this hall's existence. And so we dedicate this new building, this magnificent new building, but by itself it cannot impart knowledge. It requires people to provide that function. Innovative faculty, skilled staff, curious and determined students to produce those graduates who, with their classmates across the engineering campus, will sally forth and provide a host of societal advances, create what can be. And it's my fervent hope that they'll have the same affection for Purdue and this building when they are my age that I have for this university and those Quonset huts. Hail Purdue.